God had a great assignment for Benjamin, but he knew if he had gone through life being called son of sorrow, that would have gotten on the inside. He would have seen himself as limited and defeated. So God stepped up and said, no, he will not be the son of sorrow. He is not the son of defeat. This child is a son of destiny. This child has greatness in him. Now maybe someone has tried to name you average, unqualified, unattractive, too many mistakes. God is saying to you what he said to Benjamin. I'm changing your name. No more son of sorrow. No more son of not good enough. I'm renaming you son of strength, daughter of destiny, child of greatness. Now you have to do your part and get rid of the old names. The enemy would love for you to live as the son of sorrow. When God has called you the son of strength, he knows what's in you. That's why he's been fighting you since you were a little child, trying to change your name through people, through disappointments, through your own mistakes and failures. But when you learn to change your name back to who you were created to be, all the forces of darkness cannot stop you. When you know you're a son of strength, equipped and empowered, talented and creative, surrounded by God's favour, with royal blood flowing through your veins, then doors will open that no man can shout. The right people will suddenly show up. You will overcome obstacles that look too big. When you have the right name, you'll go further than you ever imagined. Are you answering to something that you're not? Quit giving your time and energy letting those negative thoughts play. That's not who you are. When thoughts whisper, you don't deserve to be blessed. You made too many mistakes. You're unworthy. Recognize what's happening. They're trying to rename you. When you hear forgiven, redeemed, restored, that's when you need to listen. Well, hello, unqualified, inexperienced, less than. Excuse me, do you mean anointed, highly favored, well able? That's who I am. When thoughts tell you you're not attractive, nobody wants to be around you, you don't have a good personality, you're too tall, too short, don't give that the time of day. When you hear, hello, masterpiece, hello, good looking, yes, how can I help you? Now you're calling my name. Answer to victorious, answer to fearfully and wonderfully made, answer to overcomer. Go back to what God says about you. Let your heavenly father name you, not people, not your mistakes, not your past. God calls you exceptional. He calls you redeemed and forgiven. He calls you healthy and whole. He calls you a masterpiece, a giant killer, a history maker. Now do your part and let what he names you override all the other names. Your assignment is too important to go through life wearing names like inferior, unqualified, average. I'm asking you to change those names and get an agreement with God. When God gave Abraham and Sarah the promise that they were going to have a baby, they were both way too old. It looked impossible, but God did something unusual. He didn't just give them the promise. He changed their names from Abram to Abraham. Abraham means father of many nations. When God changed his name, they didn't have one child. Yet every time someone said, hello, Abraham, they were saying, hello, father of many nations. They were speaking faith into his destiny. What you continually hear starts to get down on the inside. That's why it's so important to have the right names. I'm blessed. I'm talented. I'm healthy. Now you have to keep calling yourself what God says about you. It may not happen overnight. Abraham waited for years, but every time you call yourself what God named you, it's getting deeper on the inside. It's changing your self-image. It's reprogramming your thinking. I'm sure many times Abraham thought, we're never going to have a baby. About that time, someone would walk up and call his name. Hey, Abraham. He would be reminded, you're the father of many nations. You have to call yourself blessed before you'll ever be blessed. You have to call yourself healthy while you're still fighting the illness. Call yourself free while you're still struggling with the addiction. Having the right names is what's going to help you to stand strong so you can become what God says about you. God's changed Sarah's name from Sarai to Sarah. Sarah means princess. If anyone didn't feel like a princess, it would have been Sarah. She had been barren for over 80 years. She didn't feel attractive, didn't feel special. 
Everything told her, you're finished. You'll never have a baby. She could have said, don't change my name. Just call me Sarai. I'm not a princess. That's not going to do any good. No, she accepted the name change. She said, in effect, this seems impossible. The odds are against me. But if God says I'm a princess, then I'm going to get an agreement with him. And every time someone said, good morning, Sarah, they were saying, good morning, princess. She heard that so many times, something began to come alive on the inside. Faith started to rise up. It wasn't long after that, before the promise came to pass. You may have situations that you don't see how it could work out in your health, your career, a relationship. What you're up against looks permanent, like with Abraham and Sarah. God is changing your name. You've had that addiction for years. God is calling you free. You haven't been able to have a baby. You've been barren. God is calling the fruit of your womb blessed. He's calling you a mother. Your dreams seem too big. You don't have the experience, the training. God is calling you successful. He's calling you bountiful, flourishing, abundant. Now, the whole key is, will you do like them and accept the name change? Will you keep calling yourself what God calls you, even when it doesn't make sense? Every time you do it, it's getting stronger on the inside. And eventually, you're going to become what God named you. Luke chapter 1 An angel appeared to Zechariah and told him that his wife Elizabeth was going to have a baby, that they were to name John. Well, like Sarah, Elizabeth was way too old. Zechariah questioned the angel and asked how it was going to happen. The angel told him that what God promised would come to pass. But because Zechariah doubted, he would remain silent until the baby was born. From that moment on, he couldn't speak. Nine months later, Elizabeth gave birth to a baby boy. The family, the relatives were so excited, they came over to the house to celebrate. Verse 59 says, they wanted to name the son Zechariah after his father. God said his name is John but they wanted to name him something different. We all have some days in life. People that will try to name you something that you're not. They may be well-meaning. Don't let they name you. Let God name you. Elizabeth said to them, No, his name will not be Zechariah. His name will be John. They said, What do you mean? Nobody in your family is named John. That doesn't make sense. They went to Zechariah, the father, to ask him what the baby's name would be. He still couldn't speak, so he wrote on a tablet, his name is John. Suddenly he was able to speak again. But what's interesting is the mother couldn't name the baby. Women in those days didn't have the influence that they have today. The family, the friends, the neighbors, they couldn't name the child. The only one that had the authority to name the baby was the father. They had to go find Zechariah to see what the child's name would be. The principle is your heavenly father is the only one that has the right to name you. Don't go through life letting other people put their names on you. They'll try to name you addicted, struggling, defeated. God names you free, whole, victorious. They will name your average, mediocre. God names you a masterpiece, one of a kind, exceptional. People will try to name you washed up, too many mistakes. God names you forgiven, redeemed and restored. In your mind, is your name born to lose or born to win? Is your name poor, broke, defeated? Or is your name blessed, prosperous, more than enough? Have you let life name you addicted, struggling, limited? Or do you go by what God names you? Free, whole, victorious, overcomer. Anything that's telling you otherwise, you need to change those names. And sometimes the people that should have been speaking faith into you, naming you talented, valuable, masterpiece, have done just the opposite. Because they were hurting, because they were in pain. They named you less than, not good enough. They may not have said it, but how they made you feel putting you down, not showing your love and affection. The good news is, what God names you overrides what people name you. They may name you son of sorrow, son of pain, son of defeat. God names you son of victory, son of favour, son of blessing. Don't let the negative things people have spoken over you, how you were raised, what you didn't get, determine your destiny, change your name. Have you let the days name you? Have you let life convince you who you are? Letting those negative thoughts tell you that there's nothing good in your future? Like with Abraham and Sarah? Right now, God is changing your name. Your new names are blessed, prosperous, one of a kind, valuable, child of the Most High. Now, do your part and accept the name change. 
Tune out all the negative and keep calling yourself what God calls you. If you'll do this, I believe and declare strongholds that have held you back are being broken. You're about to step up to who you were created to be. New levels of influence, favor, restoration, healing, the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name.